The sting is slight from my lance at night And my fingers feeling pained Can't remember when I last changed it Is it springtime once again? <laughs> my fingers pounding like my heart beat deep inside I could change the depth, know this lancet's fried. <laughs> Don't let your window ever see Be the good girl you always claim to be Rotate, don't wait, don't let them know Test my own glucose, calculate my own doses, and give my 
own shots, and I was told that if I did this, everything was going to be fine. Well, at one point in my first three days of kind of coming in and out of consciousness, apparently, in a very Pollyanna kind of way, I woke up and told my mom, I'm glad this happened to me and not some other kid because I can handle it. And then I passed back out and she cried like a baby. Um, not a baby. So, um, but this is the thing is I thought you just had to be like, no, you'd be responsible and you've got this. You can handle it. They've told me I have to take shots for the rest of my life. And, okay, I, I can do that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what I was talking about. Uh, but I was 10 and I was great and that's wonderful, right? So this is, I'm not entirely sure I had it all figured out. This is what 30 years of A1C can chart like. So for many adults in the room, if you had A1C checked this long, this is probably familiar to you to a degree. But my highest A1C ever was about three years after diagnosis was 15.4. But here's the thing. You guys are really ready to say, oh, well, you know, teens and managing glucose. I had color-coded log books. I would shade in the top right-hand corner if I took an injection in the top right arm. I was the poster child for compliant diabetes. And yet, but as I like to say, the data only tells part of the story. And somewhere, if you're looking at this graph, somewhere circa 2007, it all just locks into place. And it's been in place now for 12 or 13 years. So what happened? Well, again, that's just data. One of the things that I like to tell people is that you are more than a number. The number is just a data point to tell you what to do next. I do not get worked up about what my A1C is or isn't. It's not a grade. It's not a score. It tells you nothing about what was happening in my life. So that top picture there, that was me in seventh grade, playing volleyball, straight A student, 15.4 A1C. High school, running in the high nines, low tens, top of my class, starring in the shows. College, double major, summa cum laude, A1C in the tens, got an insult bump for the first time. Young adult, I was a music teacher. You're shocked. <laughs> And I'd still never seen an A1C anywhere close to the recommended. I didn't see my first A1C under 8 until I was 26. So then there's a second row of what happened. You see a newly married A1C 6.1. My husband does not get all the credit. <laughs> I have two beautiful babies who are now 9 and 7 and went through two pregnancies with type 1 diabetes. So as I said, you have life going on. And it's so much richer and more interesting than these data points. So what happened? What happened between picture number four and picture number five, aside from this guy, again? <laughs> don't tell him that I say anything nice about him. <laughs> so and people say, well, it's, it's the advent of technology. Technology has done so much for you. So people who know me know that I'm a technology nut. I was one of the first 20 people on a DIY AP system. I've used every meter, every pump. I can tell you down to the minuscule stats of delivery and weight. I know the weight of insulin pumps. I know a lot about diabetes tech. And I've spent years talking to audiences about how do you find the tech that's right for you? So everybody always assumes that tech is the answer. In 29 years, I've had at least 18 different models of glucose meters. That's, that's just what I can come up with off the top of my head. 12 different insulin pumps from six different pump companies. Eight different CGMs from four companies. Seven different insulins, including inhalable. Two different DIY automated systems. And let's be honest, probably one that said. <laughs> so, it was the technology, right? No. Again, I saw my first A1C in the sixes before I ever slapped on a CGM in 2008. I saw my, I started an insulin pump in 2000 when I was in college. A1Cs were in the tens. There was no magic technology bullet. What I found was community. Community is a non-negotiable tool in my technology toolbox. Technology can deliver your insulin. It can do some of the thinking for you sometimes. It can tell you a data point to act on like an A1C. 
but technology cannot heal your soul. Technology cannot be there for you when you are ready to give up, and sometimes it's the technology you're ready to give up on. I joined a, an online community. My husband does get the credit here. Uh, we were newly married, and he said, did you know people are talking about diabetes online? And I was like, why? <laughs> <laughs> I had never known anyone with type 1 diabetes. Well, I mean, I knew somebody in college, and she wore a pump, and I would see her occasionally. I'd be like, oh, yeah, you know, she's got the pump. Maybe I'll think about that. But there were people talking online about diabetes, and it changed my life. I joined a community called Two Diabetes. Uh, you guys may have heard of it. Um, it's now a property of Beyond Type 1. And I met so many people. And for the first time in my life, I mean, my husband, my mother, my father, they, they really support me in diabetes, but they don't get it. Sorry, parents, I love you but you don't live it the way we live it inside our bodies. And something about finding somebody that, that was just table stakes. Like I didn't have to explain that, that got it. It was, it was life changing. So there's this quote by this poet named Joe Strange that I like. Human connection is the most vital aspect of our existence. Without the sweet touch, I love that, the diabetes thing, it's great, sweet touch. Of another being, we are lonely stars in an empty space, waiting to shine gloriously. So if you had told me as a young adult that I needed support, I would have rolled my eyes. Oh yes, I need to go to a support group for my diabetes. Thank you very much. Yeah. I was independent. Remember, I had been told that if I just did the things I was supposed to do, that I would have this. But nobody knew the burden inside my head. Nobody knew how hard I found this and how much of my concentration and energy on a daily basis while I was out there performing in shows and, do, and making good grades, how much of my energy always on the back burner was dealing with this. And finding that human connection, like I said, was extraordinary. And it made me shine gloriously. So, uh, Brene Brown, who is a just a soulful and lovely um, Houston-based professor, she, she studies in the social sciences, She's written a lot about vulnerability and guilt and shame and the way we process these things. And she said, you know, we, we don't have to do it all alone. We were never meant to. Humans are social creatures. Even on the days when you just want to like wear your yoga pants and like, you know, eat popcorn or whatever. You, humans are actually, we need human connection. And uh, the two people I most credit with being stars in my orbit, one of them, again, my husband, uh, he was someone who not only shared with me that people other than him could talk to me about diabetes, but he encouraged me to try new technologies, he hacked on my diabetes devices, he helped write Night Scout, slapped a DIY system on me, and then went so far as to now he works with me as a senior software engineer at Bigfoot Biomedical, where he's declared he's going to build me an AP system. So he's been a huge supporter, but the thing that has been most supportive that he has done is he has empowered me and supported me in efforts to reach out to my community. When I wanted to volunteer with nonprofits, he stayed home and watched the kids more. When I wanted to go to a, a I wanted to go across the nation to a summit, he, he paid for it, he said, we'll find a way. So he supported not just me and my daily diabetes, but he supported me reaching out to my community. And that was extraordinary, and that community so the founders of 2diabetes.org, you see us there? I'm pregnant with my daughter in that picture. That was the day that I met them in real life. It was my first trip to the Bay Area. And then that's us today. He and his wife uh, are there on the Lovano team at the JRF Walk, and Kevin and me are there with our kids. I found people that I could connect with. And these people, many of the people I found legitimately are like celebrity diabetes rock stars at this point, but it doesn't matter who is in your orbit. It's the depth of your connection. So these are some pictures. Three of them are from the Bay Area Diabetes Summit, but I just had to give uh, an Aaron Kowalski photo because I'm really excited about his leadership just being announced at JRF. These are all people I've run into at Bay Area Diabetes Summits over the years. You have an opportunity today to not only 
listen and learn and, and chat with some of the best and brightest researchers and exciting community members and community leadership in diabetes in the world at this summit. We have an opportunity to make friends today. The people sitting on either side of you who you know, you may not know, these are people that get it. You don't have to explain diabetes to the mom at the end of the row. You don't have to explain diabetes to the woman who's here with her husband who's like, I don't know about this whole thing, but I'll come and I'll support you with this. These are people who here today, guys, look around, this is your community. So the size of your community, I said, doesn't matter as much as the depth of your connection with them. This is a quote from a, a guy who's now chief community ad advocate at Intel. So it doesn't matter if your diabetes star is literally one other person. That's fine. But you need someone in your life who you can call up and be like, well, Crystal Samaya and I had a great conversation. We were having a business call about um, my being master of ceremonies. And the first 15 minutes was us just dropping really inappropriate language about our high blood sugars. And like, the ability to do that with somebody that I'm not, you know, that I, that if I went low on this stage, you guys would all know what to do. Um, the fact that, that, again, you don't have to explain yourself to someone and that that part of your heart that you keep so hidden is just understood, right? So, we have a phenomenal program today. What you get at the Bay Area that I mean, Summit, you leave legitimately, and trust me, I've been all over the nation and I work with nonprofit. You don't get this anywhere else but in the Bay Area. We live in an extraordinary place. This is an extraordinary combination of nonprofits who put this program together today. So you want to hear about smart insulin? You're going to hear about that next. You want to hear sesiones en español? Lo tenemos. You want to hear, uh, if, if you're a parent, if you're a spouse, if you're a partner, if you are a young adult, if you're a teenager, you want to work better with your provider, we've got a session on that. You want to learn to take insulin better? We've got a session on that. You want to strike the spike after, after meals? You want to learn about cure research. You want to learn about how do I navigate uh, travel? How do I travel with diabetes? I'm getting on a plane tomorrow, and that's one of my thoughts. You want to learn about how do I manage exercise? What about women's health issues? What about pregnancy? There are sessions on all of these things today, and your opportunity to learn from some of the best researchers in the, com in the country. We have people here today who are presenting papers at major conferences, and you guys are getting uh, sneak peeks and glimpses at some of that research. So this is a great time to be in the Bay Area and a great place to be together. So, oh, and I want to say, I'm really excited about the closing speaker because he's my colleague at Bigfoot, Lane Desborough, and he's going to be talking about automated insulin delivery. So you want that? We got it too. You're coming to uh, get the raffle ticket anyway, so <laughs> come, to the, come, to the, come to the end. So, and then the opportunities that you have in the Bay Area, I will tell you, I mentioned that uh, I had never known anybody with type 1 diabetes. Well, I grew up in Dallas, and I'll be honest, don't tell them I said this, but they had a terrible sense of community in Dallas. There was nothing. Once I got to be an adult, there were occasional, like, happy hours if I wanted to drive, uh, you know, 50 miles to go to one, but there was no sense of community where I grew up. And what you guys have, through things like DYF and CARB-DM and, and the fact that the on type 1 is based here, you have amazing opportunities to keep connecting deeply with these stars in your sky. So Carb DM, I mean these are just a few of the things, but they have programs, not just in the spring and summer, but these programs actually extend through the year. Carbs in the park, coffee and carbs, beer and basils, type one topics. Type one topics, there's one coming up really soon on Tide Pool. Can we get it for Tide Pool, Howard's in the house? So, uh, coming up at the end of this month, very soon, there's the JDRF Wipeout in Santa Cruz. You can't get that anywhere else in the world. Uh, the Hope Gala is coming up. DYF, they've got the family camp at Bear Skin Meadow. They've got an adult retreat. They've got their beach day in the fall. They've got the spectacular uh, retreat, which is always a ton of fun. Uh, my team's been out there a couple times. Beyond Tech One has their slipstream in Southern California. So if you get down south out of the Bay Area, you've got slipstream. You've also got the uh, TCOID One retreat for adults in San Diego. And then ADA has Tour de Cure coming up in June. CDN, uh, not event-centric, but if you've got College Diabetes Network right now, there are all these great tools to prepare for going off to college, and then once you're at college, tons and tons, just dozens of uh, chapters all over, uh, all over the country. So, 
Uh, and then you can be like me and also get online. There are Facebook groups, there's different community forums, two diabetes, Escubia Ventus, the Beyond Type 1 communities, children with diabetes, all of these different things. You can be following diabetes hashtags, um, and if you don't know what those are, I can explain them to you after. On, uh, on Instagram, on Twitter, and actually connecting with people every single day as you need them. So, I saw this quote and I loved it. Good friends are like stars. You don't always see them, but you know they're always there. So, during the daytime, we can't see the stars. They're still there. I know that whenever I need it, all I have to do is pick up my phone. And my diabetes community is right there. I'll never forget a night I was having a really, really hard time. My blood sugar was high. I was pregnant, so I was already emotional, and I was worried about the high blood sugar, and my infusion set in my insulin pump, it turns out that I had a bent cannula, which means, that, it means I wasn't getting my insulin, and I was so mad. And my husband was like, you know, don't worry, we'll bring your sugar down. I'm like, it's not it. You don't understand. It's a mad that I can't articulate. And I curled up in a ball and just cried and cried, but I sent out a tweet. And the support I got back from people who just got it, they just got why I was mad. Why I was mad that the technology failed, why I was mad that I even had to deal with it, they just got it. And the amount of support that came flooding in, I have to admit, again, don't tell my husband, it was so much more meaningful than his arms around me. <laughs> because it was just permission. It was saying, you're, you're like, I, I have a friend who says, you know, we talk about, Depression and anxiety is having, uh, in many ways, your brain is having an abnormal response to a normal situation. And I had a friend who works in mental health tell me one time, you're constantly in an abnormal situation, Melissa. Diabetes is not normal. And your brain is trying to respond. So if you're feeling abnormal that day, it's okay. Your brain is working. So just this idea of finding out who your stars are and you have an opportunity today throughout the year in the Bay Area to connect with people in a way that I never did when I was where you are. So I'd love to continue to connect with you. My name is Melissa Lee. You can find me online as Sweetly Voiced. I have a blog that I don't write too much anymore, it's sweetlyvoiced.com. You can find all of my parodies there um, and all of my past writings. And I'm in the Bay Area. I'm in Milpitas. So uh, whenever you guys want to chat, I'll be your star. Thank you.